Brazilian football is changing. Why? Because in July 2023, the Brazilian Football Federation announced the new interim manager of the national team, the Seleção, and the man they chose was the most radical option they could have possibly gone for. Fernando Diniz, manager of Fluminense and the man that I've described as having the weirdest tactics on the planet. That is, if you're looking at it from a European perspective. Because what Janice represents is a footballing philosophy that is distinctly Brazilian. Many football writers, some of whom I've mentioned on the channel before, have done great work in defining exactly what that philosophy is. Jamie Hamilton calls it relationism, which is a term that is gradually becoming more mainstream. While the anonymous Brazilian writer, who goes by Josef Boschik, has written tens of thousands of words detailing what he calls the functional attack. And whether you call it relationism or functional attack, Fernando Diniz is one of the most high profile proponents of this football philosophy, and almost certainly the most radical. His teams appear to abandon structure by concentrating their players on one side of the pitch and seemingly ignore space, preferring a game of close combination and improvisation. In other words, by appointing Janice, Brazilian football has actively rejected the dominance of European tactics, the much more positional game, which former coach Tite was becoming more and more influenced by. Instead, they're embarking on a new footballing journey towards what they hope will be more Brazilian in essence and will reunite the people with the Seleção. This video is the first chapter of my coverage of Janice's Brazil, where we'll look at their first couple of games, what differences we saw, and what work still needs to be done to take this team back to the top of the world. So if you enjoy, consider leaving a like, and let's get into it. Straight away in Janice's first game against Bolivia, we saw clear differences from what we'd seen under Tite. In one of the very first actions of the game, left-wing Rodrigo drifted inside and towards the ball rather than staying tight to the touchline. And from then on, Brazil's structure was based on getting players in close proximity, particularly on the left-hand side. There were certainly some elements of a more familiar approach. For example, Rafinha was often seen hugging the right touchline waiting to receive the ball, but this was against a very low block and isolating Rafinha looking for the switch of play into... Regardless, from the average positions of the players, we can see the emphasis on association compared to this game of Tite's, also against Bolivia, where the players are more evenly spread out and remain close to their original zones. Against Peru in game two, who were more aggressive in their defending, Janice's philosophy, at least in terms of structure, was much more clear. When the ball was on one side of the pitch, Brazil actively grouped their players around it, as one winger often drifted across the pitch to get involved. And across both games, by creating more support options and freeing players positionally, the players were able to start combining in the classic relational ways, converging on the diagonals to create esquigenius of the pitch and using tabelas to progress the ball. Particularly against Bolivia, who admittedly were very poor, we saw promising signs of relationships being built, resulting in a comprehensive 5-1 victory. And even against Peru, there were signs of things clicking. The sequence had Rodrigo drifting from the left flank to the right and getting in behind completely unmarked. However, that game against Peru, which finished 1-0, also proved that this journey will not be easy. Against a well-disciplined and aggressive team, there was a definite lack of rhythm in Brazil's game and an undeniable disconnect between Janice's ideas and what was happening on the pitch. This should come as no surprise, after all, Janice has only had these players for a week, most of whom come from European leagues and have internalised a radically different way of playing. But from what I've learned so far about the functional attack, or relationism, there are certainly ways that this team needs to improve. I'd love for you guys to let me know what you think in the comments, but I'm going to explore two of them, starting with the simple issue of structure. It's clear by now that Janice has no interest in rational occupation of space. He wants his players close to the ball. But on more than one occasion, his wingers didn't understand that and stayed glued to the touchline. He can see him gesticulating to, I think it's Rodrigo, to come across, but to no avail. In the same vein, the centre-backs must understand that the goal is to play on the side of the pitch the players have converged, not to open the ball out into space. But both Marquinhos and Gabriel were often oblivious to that, defaulting to what they know, which is to open out and switching play even though all the Brazilian players were ahead of them. Again, much to the dismay of Janice. And that kind of leads on to the second and bigger problem, which is ball circulation, or rather too much ball circulation. In the positional attack, circulating the ball, moving from side to side is integral because you're trying to create gaps in the opponent's shape and exploit space where your attacking players are waiting. But in the functional attack, circulation is much less valuable 
because your players are not spread out across the field waiting for the ball, but gathered around and ahead of it. So what's much more important is passing forward, using the support you have to play through your opponent. And you can see that when it does happen, it looks great. But the common theme in the game against Peru was Brazilian players circulating, opening out, playing quickly into space, because that's what these players are used to doing. Probably the biggest culprit was Bruno Guimaraes, who I think began to annoy the likes of Neymar for looking too quickly for the switch of play rather than using the passing options around him. The reason playing forward is so important here is that, as Boschik says in his writing, the functional attack is about arriving into space, not being in space. In other words, the players start around the ball and move forward through the opponent with it, rather than players staying in zones and only the ball moving forward. And what you're seeing now is one of the better examples of that. The key to this is creating passing options that allow for forward movement, not movement side to side. Washik talks about some players providing passing options to feet and others going to the future points, Oponto Futuro, where the ball will arrive. And having both of these is what allows for progression forward and through. But while too many Brazilian players were concerned with circulation, the obvious exception was Neymar, who seems to understand this football intimately. Unfortunately, he had a pretty poor game against Peru, he lost the ball quite a lot, but you can see the intention behind his game is completely different to that of Guimaraes. For one, he has more pauser, he waits, tempts rather than rushing actions, but crucially, he's almost always looking forward, using his support options to penetrate through. And when he passes, he moves forward with the ball, looking for tabelas, for combinations. While yes, he lost the ball a lot, the intention is what Janice wants. Less circulation, more bravery to move forward and through. And with that will come the Tabellas, the Escaginias, and all of those principles that we see from Janice's Fluminense. So the good news is there's an example and a clear path forwards. The bad news is that Janice does not have unlimited time with these players, and at club level, they're not going to be developing these concepts. So Bruno Guimaraes has outstanding technical quality, he could be a massive asset to this team, but with the international break over, he'll go back to Newcastle and continue to develop as a positional player. It's a similar story for Rafinha, who, when he did get into a rhythm, looks like one of Brazil's better players. But of course, he'll go back to Barcelona, a very strict positional system, so it's possible his progress from Brazil's perspective could be stunted. And aside from the Brazilian-based players and those from Real Madrid, you could say the same for the majority of the squad. So it'll be interesting to see if Janice puts more faith into the likes of Andre, Nino, and even calls up more Brazilian-based players. But I don't want to detract too much from the fact that these are really exciting times for Brazilian football. With Janice in charge, even if it's only for a year, they have begun the journey to re-establishing their footballing identity, one that I think will get the most out of their phenomenal talent, and that will resonate more with the public. However, there are treacherous waters ahead, and we're living in a world where, at club level, players take on an enormous amount of tactical information, playing in a very specific way. And as the best Brazilians continue to read from the European manuals, it may prove more difficult than expected for the Selecao to rediscover its own identity. Only time will tell, and I'll be keeping an eye on this journey, so I hope to see you back in October as Brazil take on Venezuela and Uruguay. Make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that video, but otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.